<laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning to you guys. It is the first Thursday of October, and guess what that means? That means it is time for Her Money and Investing Show with yours truly, Jessica Perone. Um, I'm coming at you through LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and you can check out all my past shows on HerFinIQ.com. It's been a really, really exciting September here in Herfin IQ land. Um, I published some self-directed courses so that you can take them online in your own time. You no longer have to have me in person to give you the classes. You can take them at your leisure. I also have a brand new free mini course, Investing Sense, where you can hear me talk about the top questions that women have when they are starting their investing journey. So October is starting off a little bit less spooky than September. September was really spooky in the markets. Um, yeah. Anyone else like found September a little on the scary side when it came to their retirement accounts or their investment accounts? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to remind you about a couple things when it comes to investing and, and just thinking about the markets in general. We really do want to be thinking long term, right? We want to think long term in our investment strategies. So the first thing we want to make sure we are doing is continuing our contributions to our retirement accounts. And um, I saw this really great research report out of Cary Street Advisors, and they were talking about the return of continuing to invest through a bear market. Okay. And they put, there's a really interesting chart in there. If you want to see the research report, let me know. I, I have the PDF. I have the, um, I think it's just on their website. I can send you the link to it. But basically, if you continue to invest, you know, do your monthly contributions to your 401k on a monthly basis through various bear markets, they show what the return would be five years and 10 years after. So for example, the first bear market that they were talking about was from March 2001 to 2003. Um, this was actually the tech bubble. And that I, when I saw that, I was like, it made me think about the tech bubble that we went through during COVID. So I guess history does uh, repeat itself, right? Well, anyhow, if you had continued to do your direct deposits right into your 401k during March 2001 to, to March 2003, the tech bubble, um, five year forward return would be 27% and your 10 year forward return would be 51%. And in my uh, my workshop, my um, investing workshop for women, Money Talks, we actually looked at that. I showed them. I showed them a um, chart of SPY, which is the S and P 500 index ETF. And I showed them. I showed them the short term, like short term, right? Year to date, this this looks like a big sell off. But when you look at it from a long-term perspective, then it doesn't start looking so scary, right? So these are reasons to look at investing in the long-term. Oh, okay. So back to this Cary Street Advisors report, they talk about the second bear market. And so the second bear market was April 2008 to 2009. And guess what? That was during the housing market bubble. Okay. Okay. You know, again, I was like, "Ooh, history repeating itself." You know, some people have been thinking that we are in and have been in a horrible. Yeah, excuse me, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm like tripping over my tongue here. That we have been in a housing market bubble, and with interest rates going up, some people see the softening, right? The softening and the slowing of the housing market. So I, I was thinking about that too. I was like, "Ooh." Again, do, 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 history repeating itself. Okay, but so if you would have continued your contributions on a monthly basis to your 401k, right, your five-year forward return during that period would be 74%, 74%, and your 10-year forward return would be 163%. Yes, if you continue to do that. Hey, Mina, thank you so much. Yeah, right? When you think of things from a long-term 
per term perspective, right? It really does put it into, into perspective of, of, of the power of investing for the long term. Okay. Now you do need to set up your finances though. So you feel comfortable in a storm like this and feel comfortable continuing to, to do your direct deposits to your IRAs. So in order to do that, it's really important to have that emergency fund. It is because your emergency fund is your buffer between having to take monies out of your investments in a down market, right? And it's also if something if something happens in your life and, and, and you need monies right away, right? It is also the buffer from your, your high interest rate credit cards, okay? But what's really great right now with interest rates having been increased so rapidly over the last three, six months, you are seeing higher yields on savings accounts. So when was the last time you guys checked what kind of yield you were getting on your savings account? Anyone? Okay. So if you haven't looked recently, I would really love for you to go over to bankrate.com. You know that I love this site for looking for um, high yield savings accounts. Um, those are typically offered by online banks. And remember, if it says member FDIC, you can trust that online bank. So going forward, there is one little trick I want to tell you about. Bankrate is doing something a little on the tricky side. So at the top, it says featured offers. Okay. And they put the people that are paying for placement at the top there. Okay. And if you scroll down and you say other, other offers at the bottom, you can see the other uh, different types of high yield savings accounts that are offered for you. And some of them are actually higher than the ones at the top under offered accounts. So definitely, definitely, definitely scroll to the bottom and click on see more. Okay. Definitely do that. But I have seen um, yields on there up to 3% for high yield savings accounts. So yes, yes. Go check it out for your emergency funds. However, I do want to remind you that the high yield savings account is where you want to put it. You want to be careful with CDs and money markets. And why do I say that? We want to be liquid. Yes, stay liquid with our emergency funds. Staying liquid means you want to have access to the cash in case of emergencies. You want to be able to quickly con uh, convert it and quickly access it. Okay. If you have a CD that requires you to deposit those monies for a term, that's not really that liquid. If you have a money market that requires X amount to be in that account, otherwise you pay penalties for, for taking monies out of the account and, and, and going underneath that balance, that is not li necessarily liquid either. So you want to look for the highest yield on a savings account that will allow you to be liquid on that emergency fund. Okay, so the reason why we have high um, yields on our savings account is because of interest rates, right? And we have high interest rates because the Fed is trying to tame inflation, okay? And guess what? Something happened yesterday and it made me think that we have a little bit of a problem coming up, okay? And inflation's got an oil problem. And why do you think I say this? Why do I think, why do you think I say this? Okay, so inflation is the cost right? It is the cost of everything in your everyday life. Okay. And it's the price of everything going up. So the Biden administration has been working really, really, really super hard to get oil prices down, you know, and I was just noticing that oil prices are coming down myself. And I'm like, you know what, you know, maybe we will finally see inflation to start coming down because 
Oil affects so many parts of our lives, okay? Beyond putting it into our, the gas into our cars. It's also in so many products. Our petrochemicals are in so many products. Even getting the products from point A to point B, right? Oil. So with that said, OPEC yesterday decided to do production cuts. And this was actually sort of like, it has sort of made the Biden administration a little bit on the mad side. They're like, oh, we've been working so hard to get the price of oil down. And now they are cutting production. And that means they want, because they want to keep the prices where they are. Remember, supply demand. They are trying to cut supply to increase demand to increase pricing. Yes, yes. So Biden isn't too happy about that. And there's actually a couple of things that, that came out of the administration. Um, and let me let me just read these to you. This is from from Seeking Alpha. And the statements from the White House read, the president is disappointed by the short sighted decision by OPEC to cut production quotas while the global economy is dealing with continued negative impact of Putin's invasion on Ukraine. OK, so what some of the things he's trying to do here is 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 to consult with Congress on ways to reduce OPEC's control over energy prices, okay? And, and, and that has to do with, um, with uh, continuing to direct strategic petroleum reserves, okay? So that we can, so that they can protect Americans' consumers and promote energy security, okay? And so the other part that's interesting, and I and I love how like politics and um, global relations start start working into this because now the Biden administration is trying to like talk to Venezuela and say, hey, can we have some of your oil? Pretty much, and in 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 exchange, you know, we are going to scale down some sanctions. To me, these 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 headlines that I see are like days of our lives. You know, these to me are like global sitcoms. I love, I love, love, love seeing how how all of this unrolls and unfolds. It's so entertaining to me. It really is. I go, yep. And 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 I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised to see more EV initiatives coming down the pipeline either. So I am i wouldn't be surprised to see more headlines like the one that we saw out of Vermont this week. So Vermont is pioneering a gas clunkers to EV trade-in incentive program, right? So I wouldn't be surprised to see more EV incentive programs tr just trying to get U.S. off, not to not be dependent on OPEC oil. Yeah. So we, I'm really interested to see how this is all going to pan out. Yes. The, the OPEC and gas days of our lives. <laughs> the mini series, the mini series, the mini series. Okay. So as I was saying, gas is a large part of our budgets, right? It really is. And it's also a large par part of the cost of products. Well, there is sort of like a, a silver lining coming up for the holiday season. And I just saw this headline come out today that Target is kicking off its biggest deal days event featuring hundreds of thousands of items from October 6th to 8th and will commence its holiday day price match guarantee. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get this out there and excited before Amazon holds its early access sale. Yes. Yeah, so um, actually six. Oh, it starts today for Target. Yes, it starts today for Target. So isn't that sneaky? Target's like trying to get their sale in before Amazon does and try to get some money in there. Um, so yeah, so this week is Target. Next week is Amazon. And these retailers are trying to get a jump 
on um, on getting um, people buying for the holiday season. Is this too early for you guys? Are you guys even thinking about Christmas right now? No, I don't know. I don't. I'm not thinking about Christmas right now. Right now. I'm just thinking about how cold it is and like how snuggly I want to be on the couch. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. Um, but you know, maybe with all of that money that you can possibly save at Target and Amazon holiday sales will leave you some extra money to buy da, 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 Christmas trees. Yes, Christmas trees this year is going up in price. Yes, due to inflation. I heard this on Bloomberg Radio earlier this week that, yes, the price of Christmas trees are going up this year. So maybe, just maybe, budget a little bit more for that Christmas tree this year. Or maybe you'll want to get a side gig. Now, I'm a big, huge proponent of side gigs. Um, and, and if you think about building wealth, right, Wealth is just a personal finance surplus. You are spending less than you make and putting the surplus to work, okay? And sometimes to create that side, that surplus, you need a side gig. Well, the good news is that th this holiday season, we have some of the big box stores already announcing that they are hiring, whereas there's a lot of layoffs or maybe you just want some side gigs. Amazon announced today that they are hiring 150,000 employees throughout the U.S. in full-time, seasonal, and part-time roles psychics um, across its operations network and the pay average is 19 per hour. Um, earlier um, in September, Target announced that they are hiring 100,000 employees for the holiday season. Walmart announced that they were going to do 40,000 seasonal workers and UPS. Yep, we know we need to get those packages from point A to point B announced that they are hiring more than 100,000 workers to help handle the holiday season rush. Yeah, so if you need to supplement that income or, right, if you are looking to start growing your wealth by creating a, uh, a surplus, maybe, just maybe, considering doing a side gig during the holiday season. So what I like to do here is I like to end my broadcast with a little bit of inspiration. And the inspiration today is I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does away with fear. Let me repeat that to you. I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does away with fear. And this is from Rosa Parks. But how I would love for you to apply this is to your investing journey. There is a lot of fear about investing in the markets, having those conversations, or even learning. A lot of that has to do with self-doubt. But what I would like you to do is consider making up your mind about growing your wealth, about putting your finances in a row, about starting to invest. Because when you make up your mind, that fear will diminish. And when you know what must be done, what path, what steps you need to make to get that budgets in a row, to accelerate your savings, to put your emergency funds, to cultivate your credit score, to start putting savings towards investing. When you know what must be done, like getting your financial ducks in a row, then 
that will do away with fear because you will know the steps that you need to take to get your monies in order and grow wealth. And that is my wish for you. And what we are trying to do here at Herfin IQ to give you the checklist, to educate you on the path and the journey and the steps to take to start growing your wealth in an understandable and hopefully funny and entertaining way. If you want to continue your journey, I would love to have you in our classes, free events. Check out my blog, 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 blog posts or even my articles. And for everybody out there, may the markets be in your favor. I'm Jessica Perone, founder of Her Fin IQ, and you have been watching the Her Money and Investing Show. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next month. Bye now.